G'day guys, this video will summarize underdamped, critically damped, and overdamped motion. I've covered previously that if you have a mass connected to both a spring and a damper, then the equation of motion can be written in the form x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega n squared x is equal to zero. Once you go through all the mathematics, you can tell that if zeta is less than 1, then the block will undergo something we call underdamped motion. And that means it has the equation x equals ae to the minus zeta omega nt times sine omega dt plus phi. I'll talk about the term omega d shortly. Likewise, if zeta is exactly equal to 1, then the block will undergo critically damped motion, where x equals e to the minus omega nt times a plus bt. And lastly, if zeta is greater than 1, then the block will experience overdamped motion, where x is just this expression. a and b in these formulas are constants to be determined from the initial conditions. In the case that the block is given an initial displacement and released from rest, the underdamped curve will look like this. Notice an exponentially decaying amplitude, yet a constant frequency. The critically damped block doesn't oscillate and approaches equilibrium the fastest. The overdamped block, on the other hand, sluggishly returns to equilibrium at a much slower pace. To simplify the mathematics for the underdamped case, we defined omega d as omega n times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. Notice that coincidentally, omega d happens to be the coefficient of time, and that means it's the frequency of the underdamped system. This is what earned its name as the damped natural frequency in radians per second. In this formula, omega n is the natural angular frequency and zeta is the damping ratio.